New laptop. Must be nice. <laughs> Free laptop and all. <laughs> Watch fam, I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris. Shut the f I, Every time I say curator, I, I hear I hear the comments coming in. I, this is my job. Curator of the I Theo and Harris. Okay, show. what is up, watch fam? I'm Christian. Uh, I I buy the watches. I, I source the watches that are available for sale on the Theo and Harris watch. When you explain why you say that, it makes way more sense. What do you mean? It's a way to immediately say, what is up? We have a watch shop. Exactly, you should check it out. Exactly. What's up? We have a watch shop. You should go check it out. They sell vintage Rolex and Omega and a bunch of other things. Tudor, et cetera, et cetera. Great I could, watches. Because I could see the curator being the thing that you fall on when you say, I don't want to be, I don't want to say, I'm the guy that is the watch. I'm from yeah, this. I right, have this. I'm right. from this. I have and this. when someone asks, what do you do like for a living? I don't say that I, I, I'm the curator. I'm a curator. <laughs> I say, uh, I say, well, I, we actually, we work on commercials. I, yeah. we, write, we write and produce commercials for brands. And they're like, oh my God, for like, what kind of brands? And I'm like, well, we got a major brand. Big, big, big brand. Big, big. Yeah, that's what I say. I do. See that's the guy so that's cool. second? He's driving that car? <laughs> yeah. Look at my so, car. Someone's... <laughs> <laughs> I want to make you buy a good car. No, no, no. The, the joke is, uh, what I said to someone else, I was like, if we ever work together and we make a lot of money, if I'm your boss, you have to drive a really nice car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. they're yeah. like, oh my God. This guy is really killing That it. person's <laughs> second in command. I gotta get Michael a car now. Yeah. <laughs> Michael's like, speaking of which, I have a spec sheet down here for a Porsche Carrera 991. It's it's pre owned. They don't make the 991. I definitely anymore, can't pay so for gas. I'm though. like, oh, yeah. When people, well, well yeah, well, I guess that is funny because people say, what do you do? And now I say, I own an ad agency. Yeah, right. Because it's the coolest sounding thing that's still true. It's still true. Filmmaker, yeah. they're like, oh. The only reason I don't say that I own an ad agency is because it's, um, I don't know, I feel like I, I'd rather almost go down a rank or two because then it doesn't sound like you're like, you, you, especially me, right? If you said yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that, I'd be like, hey, he's a cool guy. Yeah. Someone like me says that, like, this guy's a God. What a douchebag. When am I going to buy from you, pal? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, we should probably talk about what this is, uh, what's cooking. Oh, yeah. So I'm Christian. This is Michael. We talk about watches uh, every week. Yep. And uh, what are our topics today? We got some heavy hitters because there is a thesis that we will prove at the end of this video. Maybe not a thesis, but basically the watch market in total, yep. both new, used, gray market, everything, I feel like recently just realized that they have not hit the ceiling. And they probably knew that for a while, but I yeah. think they recently were like, They're acting on it. Wow, we did not hit the ceiling. Yep. And we have to see where that is because yep. we're not close. Yep. Whether For whatever reason, we can discuss in a second, but yep. that's the big news. And I have a new watch that's quite expensive, but there's some value in it still, and it's really cool. Yep. But then there's the conversation that we had last week about Rolex's Tiffany OP. Mm -hmm. That is now spreading out. Mm -hmm. That was not an isolated incident, which you may have thought it would be with Paddock and the Tiffany that just went for six million, six point five million. It's metastasizing. It's, it's a met cancer, and it's everywhere, and it's my leg now. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, God. I would love it if you were a doctor, because <laughs> no matter what's wrong with me as a patient, you'd be like, "Well, you thought that was." <laughs> I'll tell you something way worse. You ever heard of empathy pain yeah. or whatever, sympathy pain? You're like, I have to do that to every person. Things are going out of control. So we have all that. And then I figured in the middle, we'll take a step away from the incredibly high-priced watches, talk about the watch shop for a little bit. Yep. And then hit the grand finale of Rolex and tie all of this thesis stuff together. Yeah. So it's a bit, you know, we're talking about Rolex, we're talking about Omega, we're talking about Speedmasters, we're talking about Precious Metals. We've got a lot of cool stuff today. Uh, I'm excited to get into it. I'm drinking coffee. My New Year's resolution is no drinking during the week before 8 p.m. 8 p.m. No, 8. No, no, no. I, I'm, not, I'm not drinking during the week anymore. This is my new thing. It's not 8 for my liver. It's, it's for uh, trying to shed some LBs. I'm trying to shed some LBs, and I think that the quickest way to do it Cut down on my sugar intake. Today's episode is sponsored by Carl Frederick. Hey, do me a favor, and every time Christian says Frederick, just say Friedrich in your head. Carl Friedrich. You'll hear more about that later and why, uh, yeah, I carry a bag all the time, and Carl Frederick uh, just sent us one, and they wanted us to review it and talk about it. It's very, very good. I'm really, really impressed. We'll talk about that later. Um, all right, let's get into some topics. Hit me with it. Hit Boom. me with your best shot. First off, Omega Speedmaster 321 Canopus? Canopus. Can oh. Yeah, it's like... Uh, it's like an hors d'oeuvre. This is a watch that uh, you look at and you may say, okay, I've seen that design before. That's a Speedmaster, Heritage Speedmaster with a 3-2-1 movement, 
Previously in steel, it has gone for fourteen thousand one hundred dollars. Well, this was like the premier, you know, uh, uh, speedmaster. This is the best speedmaster they make. This three, two, one example. Mm -hmm. They're made in very limited quantities. Uh, I, when I visited the Omega manufacturer in, in Bien, uh, I asked them, like, "Hey, did that like that watch? Did that succeed? Like, because it was announced, people were like, what the f? Can you believe that a, a speedmaster on the same price as Daytona? Yeah, yeah, and, and they were like." Yeah, it 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 really oh, succeeded. It exceeded. And I was like, really? And they're like, yeah. Well, well, again, I love the Daytona, but they were like, you know, uh, they they didn't share on Rolex. They didn't even mention Rolex really. But they just said, yes, at that price point for a chronograph, we are over delivering. You know, and we're we're gonna see more. I and love that's that is cool confidence. That was there cool. is uncool confidence. Yep. That is like, they were so polite. That's almost like ooh, ooh, you know? and then and then this came out. So yeah. so not. before we even get to that, the three two one original movement yep. that was on the moon. Yep. And this specific one, actually, it could be on the other one too. But this is all hand assembled by one person. Yes, they're they're, 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 person. they're all okay. The, all three two yep. ones are like that, which is very cool. So the difference between that watch and this watch is about. $70,000, $60,000. The steel to the gold. Steel to the gold. Yes. This Canopus Gold is a mix of white gold, platinum, rhodium, and palladium. Mm -hmm. Palladium being most known by Ford over buying palladium when they thought there was going to be a shortage, and Hermes. It's oftentimes yes. hardware on palladium, Hermes bags. That's right. Yeah. Oh, well. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. You know right? what's funny is I I know palladium is a metal, and I know that Hermes... <laughs> no, I know that. Yeah. And I know that Hermes says, oh, there's palladium hardware. It never occurred to me that hardware was actually made of palladium. Yeah. I just always figured that was just their cute little rich people name for <laughs> steel. Yeah. That is hysterical. Every brand has their own name wow. for these, these mixes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting. But, so, the entire case and bracelet is made out of that. Yes. Then, when we look at the actual bezel of the watch, mm -hmm. that is, those numbers are filled with enamel. Yep. The dial is black onyx. Yep. And then oh, on the back, <laughs> right? this watch is ridiculous. And then the eye of the seahorse is a sapphire. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, you know, step by step here. One, obviously, you know, chronographs are hot, obviously, you know, but, but, uh, so, so it's a topical watch to release. Um, historically, it's an important watch. I, I do like that they, that, that Omega invests in metals. I really do. I think that their yes. Sedna gold is mm -hmm. incredibly cool. Uh, it's unique. I think that uh, I haven't I haven't seen this Canopus gold in person yet. I'm really interested to see w how it differs from white gold. Yep, but same. I'm sure it will. Uh, you know, a I lot of R and D went into this. A lot of R and D, and you know what's interesting is style. speaking of this new laptop that is mm -hmm. right here. Apple is the by far, I guess, the biggest company now too. But in technology, it's Apple, mm -hmm. and this computer, Apple has their first integrated chip or the upgraded version of it and i feel like brands like omega rolex these big hitters it's yeah. their job much like apple yeah. to force everybody to keep going yes because yeah. if, if apple stops and just keeps producing everybody else is gonna right. take their place and maybe pass them but these big guys that have all the money to r d yeah want to stay the leaders and omega is doing that by Changing their different metals, having this, having this, having that, you know. Agreed, agreed, and I think that you know, Omega, while they're they're growing very quickly and they're becoming very important and they're doing really, really well, um, which is a different place than they were ten years ago. It's very, very. Yeah. Omega's oh, yeah. always been a great company, but they're in a very, they're in a radically different place now. Yep. Um, it, um, they're still working for your money. Hundred percent. They're working really 100%. hard to get your five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, hundred, you know, eighty thousand dollars in this case. Yeah. Um, and that's not really the case with a lot of these watch brands, right? A lot of that's watch true. brands. You know, I don't want to call it names, whatever, but it's kind of an easy sale, so they can kind of be a little bit lazy. Omega is not in there resting on their laurels, period. Uh, not yet, at least, and, and maybe not ever, or, or certainly not for a long time. I, I certainly don't think under this current leadership, under this executive leadership, that Omega will ever rest on their laurels. No. This executive leadership is insatiable. These these guys, they want to f***ing rip off heads and, and, and just... And, and, and they're successfully they're, doing it. Oh, they're, they're killing it. Omega's killing it. Omega, um, I see as... The brand that is coming up the fastest with, you know, one very specific rival mm. that is probably tied with them. But the brand that if there's going to be someone that leaps over everybody, yeah. they're top dog in that uh, contender. Uh, agreed, agreed. And, and I also think, and it's, and it's worth kind of like noting, you know, that I, Omega's still in a place. Um, or if, I don't even mean success-wise. Just like culturally, they're kind of approachable. Mm -hmm. uh, you as a client with, you know, with $80,000 or with way less. I mean, we, we, with $20,000 or $30,000. I mean, even with five or ten, in many instances, you know, if, if you're if you're nice, this is the top. There is a much yeah. lower price point to get you, into. You it. can actually be friends with the brand. You know, Omega is the kind of brand that you can have a personal relationship with, which is not the case with with these premier manufacturers. Case it's in not. point, tiny little 
Theo and Harris ad agency at the time yep. only did one film. Yep. Omega reached out and yep. was like, oh, "This is this is great." Yeah, this is great. They 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 really like they're personable. They're there. They they really want to build uh, their their uh, what's the like, legion like their army, you know, of, yeah. of loyal followers and passionate people, and they're delivering. But even on like an outreach level, I, if, whoever buys this stuff, whoever buys this. Eighty thousand dollar, you know, watch. It's really you know, rare and interesting. Speedmaster. Whoever buys their other interesting stuff, even way down the line in price point, um, that really shows they're a fan of the brand. Omega is going to, I, I feel, treat them like, like, almost like, you know, original investors. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're yeah. investing in us when we're still socially mobile, not after already everyone or you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, hundred percent. It's pretty cool. Final detail about this, I just highlighted. Yep. Not limited in production. Yeah, not limited production. Yeah, obviously, they're not but we'll busting them out. Make. Yeah, yeah it's right. interesting. Which I, I, just, I like I, that. Oh, yeah, It's not that bullshit, like, like uh, well, you know, they we're making a thousand, and if, and if you don't get one, too bad. I just, yeah, I was like, wow, what an interesting yeah. little thing to go yeah. after. Like, it's, it yeah. reminds me of, like, like, the whole, like, Billy Joel thing at Madison Square Garden. Like, he only does once a month, but he will do it until you stop coming. Yeah. I'm not going to do them every week. I'm not doing it. You, you yeah. know, Omega may only make ten of these a year or whatever it may be, but they'll just never. If you guys keep, you guys keep wanting them, they're gonna keep making them. Yep, that's Oris, cool. Oris does the same thing with their uh, trash watch. Isn't the right right way of saying it? But yeah, the recycled trash. Yeah. I love that methodology. Me too. Me too. Boom. Great. All right, our next subject is going to be a Cartier watch that the whole world is waiting for, and. I want to want to jump out of a window because we can't get it. No one can get it. Yes. Uh, but before we get into it, I want to rewind a little bit back into history and take a look at three uh, vintage watches, all available in the Theo and Harris watch shop. Uh, let's do a let's do a little bit of a deep dive. That let's... are not for five figures. Exactly. Well, one of them is. I yes. don't think you brought it today. No. Let's jump back into in the metal. I look like Thurman Munson today. Mustache, the hat. You know. I bleached these jeans too myself. Real homegrown. That's the kind of guy I am now. If it doesn't drip, it ain't my coffee. Let's get to in the metal. Woo! Here's something fun about watches. For me, at least, they're a way for you to walk in someone else's shoes. When I wear a ding date, I don't look like an 80s finance douche. I become an 80s finance douche. I wear a Constellation, like this watch here, and I'm a well-traveled executive uh, living in my peak in the 1960s. That's, that's what I feel like. The Turler stamp shows you how cultured I am, the ridges of the linen dial, how detail-oriented. And the bracelet that, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a conservative, successful man, but I'm also young and I like sport. Not like those old guys with the black croc straps. I'm, I'm different, I'm hip. You know, the Seamaster's a great watch. I'd like to add one to my collection, but I'm inspired by what the Constellation represents. You know, a dedication to supreme accuracy. That's what I would say if I was that guy. Swatches Jellyfish, on the other hand, does something completely different for me. It can go two ways. Either the artist, you know, the creative that admires what Swatch has done here. You know, deliver art to the masses because this watch is absolutely brilliant and beautiful and, and it's affordable too. Uh, kind of a f you to the world of luxury, authorized dealerships and galleries and all that. Or it makes me feel like the CEO that wears it, not quite ironically, but as this power move. Like, you know, f you guys playing your little competitive watch games, you know, who spends 50, who spends 60, who spends 70. I don't care. I like my little swatch and I still have more money than you. That's another, it's total opposite, but, but it's equally valid. Finally, a Rolex Oyster Perpetual, a reference 6552. All original, unpolished, uh, it has a rivet stretch bracelet. This for me is a Hemingway watch, you know, earnest. No frills, not even a date, just pure, reliable time. That's it. Because before Rolex was a status symbol, it was a tool. And, and not just for explorers, but for average men. Whether riding in Montmartre or fishing in Cuba, yeah, Hemingway's life is way f***ing cooler than my life, but still just a regular guy, right? Sitting in a coffee shop with a really reliable watch. That's it. While I am not and never will be as interesting as Ernest Hemingway, I do like to daydream. And watches help. Watches with real character, watches that represent something, help. So I guess that's why it's pretty convenient that I'm the curator of the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop. I get to do this for a living. And yeah, I can feel you judging me. Yes, if I sell these watches, I do make money. Okay, that's fine. In theory, yeah, I am biased. But the fact remains, these watches are awesome. So head on over to the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. And should, I, should I walk? No, baby. You ought to run. Was that fun? That was fun. I just love in in the metal. I think that was fun. Yeah, same. It was cool. <laughs> go, go go take a look at those watches. Shoot me an email if you have any questions, and uh, if you want to buy one, buy one.
So this is, oh, can, you, you can start talking about this because I'm gonna jump out of the window. This is the solar beat, which you may remember from Christian and I saying, we were gonna get them. Uh, in a string of videos, actually, every video we're like, wow, any day now we'll have any the solar now. beats. Cut to, there is a used solar beat right now. I haven't really looked at the market. I got this from you for $15,155. And a new solar beat, if you got it from an AD, is 25, 28? So that's the biggest conversation of this live that we'll get into more in a second. But before you hit the window, what are your thoughts? First of all, the Solar Beat I think is a great watch because, uh, like proportions wise, um, uh, all all the details, the crown, everything. Yeah, it's oh, like yeah. original, legit Cartier. No date. It's a real aesthetically. It's a real Cartier watch. Mm -hmm. And and as a Cartier guy, like diehard, I think that's awesome. I would be Same. wearing that watch right now. Same. Right now, I have that watch. Same. And. Um, it sucks. It sucks so badly that you can't get one. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Right. The one thing I forgot to mention was what's what's particularly interesting about this watch is it's not uh, regular quartz and it's not mechanical. It is this solar beat technology where the numerals uh, actually uh, uh, receive, accept, uh, mm -hmm. store power from the sun, you know, from being outside, and uh, and power the watch. I think that's so. Cool. Brilliant, so cool. brilliant move. It's the not, one watch nope. where everybody says you don't even have to wind it. Yep. Cartier was like, yeah, you're right. You exactly. don't even have to change the battery you're for 16 right. years. It's amazing. Yeah. I love, I, I'm in love with this watch. Um, I would wear it all the time. Uh, anyway, as with all things in the watch industry today, um, you can't even get one. Um, yep. and, and But this one's not, you, you, the reason you can't get this one isn't, well, it's not totally clear, but... Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to be uh, a, an over demand and a lack of an over demand mm -hmm. and a reasonable supply. It actually seems to be a complete lack of supply, which is what many are alleging. The, obviously, with supply chain issues, no matter which way you look at it, it seems that the global capacitor supply, since this is not a mechanical watch, mm -hmm. is affecting the solar beat production because they can't get the electronic parts to go uh, in. It's it. unbelievable. It's yeah. un and and obviously, like you know, there are way bigger issues than the fact that I can get my Cartier watch. But you know. Uh, if uh, <laughs> you. Yeah. But the rea the reality is that uh, it still is weird. Like this is a very like you know we grew up in an era we all you know we grew up in an era where kind of like this didn't really exist. This doesn't like, happen. Doesn't happen. What like, do you mean I can't get it? Yeah, it's yeah. like you have the money, you get it. Then you like you know you buy a book, you have it the next day from Amazon. You buy a microwave. Yeah. That's it. Uh, my buddy bought a, a, a nine 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 two. Uh, I don't know, like a couple months ago, a, a new Porsche uh, Carrera nine eleven. And uh, <laughs> did I tell you this? With no. the, with, yeah. Oh my God! Some I don't know. I don't know technically speaking exactly what what happened. Um, but when it was delivered, he paid a lot of money. It was it was it was one hundred and thirty eight thousand or something like that thousand mm -hmm. dollars. A lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, and when it came in, the dealer said, "Oh, by the way, uh, I believe it was the touch screen doesn't work on the thing because the there's no part. They don't have the chip." He's like, "But we'll give you a thousand dollars off the car." <laughs> You still owe us one hundred and thirty-seven oh, thousand dollars. Yeah. Here you go. Sam. But the, don't you? Know, and he's like, "But are you? Kidding me? <laughs> yeah. but are you kidding me? Like this is? Oh my nuts. god! Yeah. I look, look at, at supply chain, man. I have a new apartment. Uh -huh. I look at furniture. It's all used. It's going to be used anyways. But anything new? They're like, yeah. No. I don't know. Like maybe maybe June, July. Like it's, we can ship disgusting. it out. Like everything. This laptop took three months since we ordered it. Yep. That's crazy. It's insane. I'm not used to it. You're right. I'm not used to it at all. No, I, you're, you're not. It, it, no one is. It's not, you know, it's <laughs> yeah, like, no, I know. You know, it's just, just the weirdest fucking thing. And yeah. It, it, and then, I'm like, on a, just like on a watch enthusiast -like level, like, you know, um, there are so many watches. No, if everyone everyone wants something that they can't have right now. And, and, and I don't think it's their fault, really. It's just like, it's such a weird thing time we're living in, in the watch industry yeah the, you know the amount of the influx of, of new enthusiasts is like incredible and so many of you guys uh, that are watching are new to this and that's awesome i'm so glad to have you i'm so glad to have you yeah i mean you're up our shit a little bit uh which is i don't mean my <laughs> shit. i mean like enthusiasm yeah, yeah, yeah. that, that's the nature of it right like the, the you old guys school are in, guys are always not that happy with the new school guys like, yeah you guys you guys are in and i'm so happy about that i'm so happy that we could all have drinks and make youtube videos and talk and that's awesome i love that um but yeah it does suck when like in this kind of unprecedented time that you like can't get a watch you want it does i it's not your fault i do hope that the brands increase production uh proportionately i really mm -hmm. do yeah of course um, i don't want them to give watches to gray market dealers to flip them and make a ton of money 
that. I'm done with this gray market bullshit. Yes. Um, yes. But, you know, um, it is a weird time. And then for someone like me, who's like, oh, good thing I'm not a really big you brand new Rolex guy. I'm more of a vintage Rolex guy, so I can get those. Mm-hmm. I'm not really a new Rolex guy, so I'm not being touched by all this bullshit. I can't even get my little Cartier. Yeah, right. My little like, right. like, I'm a little Cartier guy. Usually, you can always get that shit. You get that shit on discount. Yeah. And now I can't get that shit that. But what's insane, it, it, the biggest, bigger topic that we're hopping into is, like I was saying before, it doesn't see. it seems like the watch market used, everybody in the watch market is realizing the ceiling that we thought existed does not exist because people are still paying. Oh, yeah. Like, this watch is, let's say, 600% up Yeah. from purchase price. Yeah. That's insane. That's too much money for that watch. Fifteen thousand dollars is too much money for this old. Uh, when when Cartier puts something at twenty five hundred, Cartier puts it at that yeah, price. Right. Yeah, that right. Is right. Way right. too much. Exactly. Money for that right. Watch. Cartier's not like a little micro brand. You know. Yeah. Cartier just charging what they think is like kind of a reach already. Like you know, right. Cartier's are yo, know, they reach with their prices. Like you know. They, they yeah. But some other brands where you're like, oh okay, like a, a retail Rolex, you're like, that's actually not that bad. Yeah. Right. You just you're so used to seeing them aftermarket, but Cartier, everything that they have, you're like, that's a, that's Cartier price. Yeah, of course, right. that's. Yeah. A point of Cartier. Totally. But when it's going for that much on the market, and now, what we said before, the part one of this video was last video where we talked about the Tiffany Rolex OP mm-hmm. going for 30,000, 40,000, whatever. I looked at eBay sold today, and they're they're going like 20,000 to 14,000. Mm-hmm. So they're shooting high, but going low. But comparatively, that's crazy up. And now, it extended outside of the Tiffany Rolex OP, mm-hmm. and now my friend, our friend, has the yellow one. Mm-hmm. Those are now going for twenty five thousand. Like they're also marked up. What the? Fuck? So it is literally going everywhere. And what are your thoughts on this? Because if you see in a in a market, not watch market per se, but any market with value, stock market perhaps, running up that fast, usually everybody's like, ah, oh, yeah. you know, something is not going to pan out well. Yeah. This is way oh, it'll, too it'll much. end badly. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, but what yeah. are you, what are your thoughts? I mean, you know, one it'll you know, it'll end badly. These watches are these watches are a little too expensive. But two, I think that like to change pace a little bit, keeping it the same subject, but it does make me think like, okay, kind of I know we've been talking about this for a while, like but like Look for alternatives now. You know, everyone's always like, well, you know, historically, the the YouTube, here, yo, here's an alternative to your Submariner, was always a conversation about, like, you don't have nine grand or you don't have 11 grand, no problem. Let's see what you can get us, kind of a Submariner under five. Yeah, right. It's a cool conversation. Yeah. Now, I'm like, wait, this is so out of control. Everyone should be looking at alternatives. I don't care if you have the nine grand or 11 grand. Yeah, Everyone right, right. should be looking at this. This is out of hand. Yeah, out of yeah. Hand. yeah. And I think it, you know, I think it does make a ton of opportunity for brands like Tudor, uh, brands like Oris, like, like Tudor, like they're, let's say Tudor's Black Bay, uh, mm-hmm. Black Bay 36. Okay. Yeah, sure. Right. Like the, like the Oyster case. Like yeah, yeah. They just watch. Yep. They won't release those in pastels because it's too close to, it's, you know, they're colorful. It's too close to It's too close. Right. But like, they're going to do something like that. They're mm-hmm. going to have fun. Like, you know, uh, uh, it's some, it's something, something. You know, they're yeah, going course, to be, Rolex is creating this incredible demand on one space. They're going to have to fill it somewhere else. Right. You know, and, and I think that brands like Oris can do it as well. Brands like Nomos can do it as well. Um, I, I, I love Nomos. Nomos is a, is like a favorite brand of mine and ours. And Same. I think that they have a ton of opportunity here to like kind of poach. Like, oh, yeah. Like poach, period, end. You know, I'd lo- I love that Nomos t- takes an alternative approach to, to, to like watch design. It's generally more classic and mm-hmm. it's like Bauhaus and cool and whatever. But uh, uh, I would like to see them, you know, make their – like I'd love to see a Nomos reaction to the OP craze. What is what is a what does a Nomos OP look like? I would love you to know? see a Nomos – uh, they have the Aloha, which is their 200 meter watch. Ahoy. Ado- Ahoy. I always say Aloha. <laughs> Malo- Malaho. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> what Mahalo. Does Aaron say? Oh, yeah, Mahalo. Mahalo. Mahalo, Aaron. Uh, yeah, that's hilarious. I would love to see them make a true bezel diver. Yeah, right. That would be insane. Because you know it would be weird in the best way possible. You'd be like, oh, yeah, cool. Totally. Totally. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, you know, because these weird times do create opportunities for brands, for small brands. Yeah. They just do. So I would like to see them, I'd like to see them do really, really, because frankly, they deserve it. You know, yeah. they deserve it sometimes even more than like, more than the brands that are creating the craze. Yeah. You know, and like, you look at it like these crazes, it's not like, you can't really crash this market because people are going to want a Rolex. Retail is always going to yeah. be fine, but the gray market outside of flipping and stuff like that. Even then, probably won't crash if there's still demand. But it does, like you said, it creates that opportunity for things to come up right under it. Yeah, exactly. I want to segue into some watches that, and this is something that we're going to do more regularly because there's a ton of cool shit. 
Instagram. I don't think you guys even like see. I, I get some some cool stuff pops up. I'm like, you know, oh, yeah. so I want to talk about some of those awesome you know, watches. Um, uh, we'll do that in a second. But before mm-hmm. we do, uh, our sponsor today, Carl Friedrich, sent us in uh, a briefcase that I want to show you guys and talk about. Uh, so let's do it. Pretty big and, and I think really like really functional and useful briefcase. Um, it's beautiful too. It's made from Italian leather. It's called vegetable tan. It's it's called uh, vachetta leather. That would be vachetta leather, not vachetta. Uh, vegetable tan leather, obviously, and we know this from from straps that we've made. Mm-hmm. Uh, ages really interestingly. Um, you know this, this this briefcase will develop a lot of patina with age. Uh, I I'm a briefcase guy. Um, yes, I always, I always carry a briefcase. Um, yeah, with my computer or my phone. I really I don't like having. Sh- Pockets, you know. I know, yeah. When I walk into a room, the first thing I do is dump everything I have in my pockets out. Throws it all over the room. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, you know, I obviously I know that that's really, really expensive. I have spent, uh, I was going to say small fortunes, but I think actually medium-sized Quite, fortunes yeah, yeah. on bags. Uh, and I and I actually had never bought a bag. I think well, it sounds so douchey, but it's true. I had never bought a bag, a briefcase under a thousand dollars. I suppose mm-hmm. I bought vintage briefcases for yeah. like one hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Um, but vintage is is not new. You're making concessions. Uh, you are and durability and all that stuff. You know, yeah. you Especially if you're someone that likes to age their own product. Exactly. In an objective sense, this is far, far superior. I just saw this bag for the first time today. If I'm looking at it, the things that I like right away are thick leather, which is always a plus for me. Vegetable tan, I know that's great. Usually stands up better than chrome tanned, or at least is a little higher quality because it's a little harder to do. And at the bottom, there's these nice little metal feet, so when you actually put it down, you won't scrape the leather. Yeah, and, and it stands up straight. It has actual body and, and, and like form as opposed to a bag that just kind of falls over, which basically all of my bags, they all do fall over. Yeah. Uh, which is, and I paid a lot There's more than $800 full of sacks for of money my bags. Yeah, exactly. over. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, I also like the discreet branding. I, I don't like things that are overly branded, which is funny for someone that uh, collects Gucci loafers, but it's the truth. Like, yeah, right. I don't like when your name is on my sh- uh, generally yeah. speaking, yeah. Um, but I've, like, this is very discreet. I, I, I think that they did it. I think they did a great job. So the briefcases are manufactured in Tuscany, handmade, and they have a lifetime warranty. And the best part is you can do a hundred day trial. So if you have you have an errand that you need to run for a hundred days, try it out if you don't like it. Send it yeah, back. I think that's really I think that's really important. I mean, I know I know for me like you know you don't really find out if something is good or not you know especially for a brand you don't know like yeah you know when i buy from a really big famous brand i expect it to be like of high quality of but course oftentimes smaller brands actually manufacture better quality stuff because they're working harder for your money yeah that's just the fact of it yep uh, we see that in watches constantly we see that in watches constantly um but you don't want to take a shot on a small guy because you're like all right well i'm gonna throw away you know a thousand dollars or in this case almost eight hundred dollars yeah. and and i don't know like do i want to take a shot with them but when they give you a warranty like that i feel very very comfortable it also the i guess the final thing is really if you really want a bag like this you're probably in the market for a bag where you think okay i'm going to use this presumably for the rest of my life knowing the person getting this bag you'll probably get another one but that's where the nice part is or that's where it you being able to do like a hundred day trial or you know even just being able to open it see if you like it use it for a day and send it back that's where it's nice if this was going to be like a year thing it doesn't matter as much but you have to look at this and think is it something I will take with me for the foreseeable future. Yes, keep it. Exactly. Exactly. And, and as far as me, I mean, I know that I'm a little bit more like on the kind of like classical, you know, and like the, you know, but you know what I mean, like more, oh, yeah. more dressy than you are, a little bit more casual than I am. Yeah. I mean, today I look like James Dean, so it's a little different. But yeah. But uh, I don't look like James Dean, do I? You said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no. You know what happened is you said that I was like, yeah, I get it. He means. He like, I jacket, jacket on. And I let the comments do the rest. Yeah. <laughs> You, um, but um, but but I think that there are a couple of staples that like uh, you know kind of a a, gen- a g- gentleman needs. I mean, you can be a bad guy and have all these things too. But you know, but the kind yeah, of true. look that more classical look is, uh, for my opinion, a, a, a really good watch, preferably on a strap for me. Yeah, uh, a really good bag, um, a, a really good bag, and a good pair of shoes. I really think that those three things make you look very professional and polished. And if you buy them right, you only need one of each. True. I have. 35 pairs of shoes, that is true, mm-hmm. but I could just have one. I could have right. one bag and I could have one watch. Right. Um, anyway, so I, I'm, I'm, I just got this in uh, last week, so I have not given it my full 100 days yet, but uh, first impressions are, are fantastic. I think this is a beautiful bag, great to touch. Uh, I have no doubt that it's going to impress me in 100 days. We'll do a check-in, so if I'm wrong, then I'll call, you know, I'll, 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 I'll admit that, but I'm not going to be wrong. I can. I think I can tell already. Again, Carl Friedrich, check down below uh, to take a look at these bags uh, a little bit uh, really closer. Yeah. That's it. Let's Do we get think? Back into, uh, get back into watches.
All right, Instagram man. Instagram man, the candy man can. Hold Who on. can build a sunrise? <laughs> You know that guy? Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, thanks, man. Look, did you, did you do the jaw, too? Sprinkle it with you. <laughs> All right. The first watch I want to talk about is, is the Tudor Tiger. I sure. love these watches. And I like these... Yeah. I like these watches before OPs were cool. Oh. Okay, uh, way after Stellas were cool, but before OPs were <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Tudor Tiger. It was like a collaboration between Tudor and uh, and Tiger Woods, obviously a professional golfer. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you know Tiger. You don't the golfer. know Tiger. <laughs> so it was a brief collaboration. I think these watches are absolutely awesome. Uh, they came in yellow. They came in red. Obviously white. But it, they're just really beautiful watches. Hundred they're, percent. They're around like five six thousand dollars. I think that they're underpriced. Um, but again, really beautiful things just goes to you know show you if you go back not that long ago this shit existed like the craze with you no one wanted a fucking yellow watch you know you said it was ugly ago. right you guys didn't like it when i had it two years ago I mean, it sold in like two minutes but but a lot of people like that's <laughs> but stupid what you sounded like you right. know yeah you know? i have a question for you yeah why throughout that conversation did you keep taking screenshots of the watch so I would send it to of, you? of that it's but you took a bunch Oh, did I forget? <laughs> okay, you were forgetting. I'm just gonna send it to you. <laughs> you can't go f yourself. Dude, you could probably watch it throughout this of you talking. You just kept screenshotting it. I was like, wow, he must really like that. Why are you making fun of me in front of our friends? <laughs> you ever see that meme that was like, if you honk the horn and hit the brakes on your car at the same time, it takes a screenshot? No, I don't know what you're talking about. This is another really awesome watch. This is a uh, Buckman. Um, I've, I've never seen this example before, but I've seen a lot of uh, like, like panda dials, you know, with complicated. This watch is awesome. Right? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. D day of the week, a bunch of different colors and instrumentation, orange on the second hand, and the day. That's just a very cool watch. The colors kind of remind me of a periodic table, too. They do, don't they? Yeah. I think this is very cool. Again, like, brands had more fun with color. I, I, don't, I don't know when we got all serious and conservative. I don't know when that happened. If you go back to the vintage watches from the 70s and stuff, like, Popping. it was color. It was like it was the Doxa wild. era. Yeah, I guess if you looked at, like, what people were wearing for their suits, too, are they wearing, like... Are there any doctors in the house? Why, when Christian and I talk for long periods of time, our noses get extremely itchy, and you can see us itching them on the live? Why does that happen? And how do we fix it? Like, leisure suits, and I guess people... I guess look, the style was people a little did, different. People <laughs> yeah. looked silly People are in then. sweats now. We're like, why is everybody so reserved? Yeah, exactly. Look at this. This is a cream 992. That wow. is just ridiculous. It's a GT3. Oh, my God. Look at that. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? I don't know if you guys are Porsche fans out there, but I think that we're going to continue doing this whole Instagram like run-through thing. Yeah, right. I also saw a 991 yesterday on Instagram. I'll send it to you. Uh, in, in It's called Crayon Gray. Oh, my God. I, I would... I, I'm keeping the G, yeah. but every time I see a 991 on Instagram, I'm like, I should get rid of it. I mean, the G is also not helping itself by throwing up every 100 miles and breaking down. Yeah. No, it's been good. It's, it's been <laughs> oh, good. Thank, thank God. God. Thank God. Uh, now, here's here's not just something to show you, but a question. Yes. What 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 is odd about this watch? This is a Tudor Black Bay. Let me see. Sorry, my nose Tudor is super itchy, too. The 58. And what is odd about that watch? You can't tell. Hold on. It's obvious. Okay, is it the polishing on the side? No. Look okay, the loop is it... plots. They're yellow. Oh. People, people are actually going out of their way to patinate, repaint the uh, the hands and the loom plots on these tutors. They're repainting them. They're not they're putting repainting them in the stove or anything. They're no, putting... repainting them. Wow. They're actually painting. Oh, not, not individuals. They're sending them to yeah, professionals of course, of course. that are doing it. Isn't that bizarre? That is bizarre. That, what do you, I know your thoughts on this to a degree. Wow. What are your thoughts on... Fake patina. I love it. Whoa. I love it. I guess I don't know your thoughts. Oh, yeah. I think it's great. If, if I bought a Submariner or a Sea Dweller tomorrow, I yeah. would immediately buy a either probably aftermarket or original ghost bezel. Okay. And I would send it to a watchmaker to have the loom plots colored. Really? 100%. I, I'll, I will, you're, I'm, I'm not going to spend $30,000 on like the quote unquote real deal. Obviously, yep. it's a real Rolex. Yep. But I'm not going to go spend $3,000 or $5,000 on a bezel. I'm not mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to beat it up, not doing it. Uh, and I'm not, and if I don't have a watch with custard patina because I didn't spend the extra 8000 on the dial, then I'm just going to make it up myself. It's I, I have no problem with, with modding. I, I think modding's cool. Mm -hmm. Again, like if anyone said, you know, naturally, now this is still an $11,000 watch that now looks like a $22,000 watch. But if someone's like, oh, dude, that one's. Nuts! And I thought that they believed that that was a naturally patented watch. I would say, dude, I had, I had, I had, I had it modded. Yeah, I had it modded. Yeah, you know, I, I don't want. It. I'm, I'm not a matter of like, like tricking people into thinking that I have expensive. Like, it's either you know, 
I think it's cool that I did my own thing. You say that to them as I drive by you, my camera, it's straight piped. So it's super loud. I'm like, we we mod everything. We mod everything. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Bob Saget is dead. Who would have thought? What the Was that? I I saw something that was like, oh, rest in peace, Bobby. And I was like, who's Bobby? And then it hit me in the chest. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, everyone was like, oh, he's in our childhood. And that's true. I mean, you know, Bob Saget was a big part of everyone's childhood. But I look at it like, dude, a 62-year-old guy that wasn't even in bad shape, no drug problem, and like $200 million just died. Why, yeah, right. why, why, is, <laughs> why is my dad still alive? Yeah, is, <laughs> my no. dad is heavier than Bob Saget and doesn't have $200 million. <laughs> like, and I love my dad, but it makes me nervous. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Christian's Instagram is a mix of watches... Fine Italian suits and ducks quacking. Yeah, Videos right. of they, ducks they, quacking. This is such an underrated uh, watch. This is a Patek Philippe Russian 3970. That uh, so so 3970 was was a uh, you know reference of the perpetual calendar chronograph that was like not very loved. Um, yeah, for for like you know, good reason. Like it's it's not as beautiful as a 2499, a 1518. It's not as uh, modern and 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 beautiful as the as the 5970. Um, but the bottom line is like these 3970s for years were trading between. Between like sixty thousand and eighty thousand dollars, you know, and um, where, where their competitors were trading in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and everyone was like, like, wow, like those watches are undervalued. Like everyone yeah. knew it. Mm-hmm. Everyone knew they were undervalued, mm-hmm. but so few people put their money where their mouth was. So few people, and now they're still like relatively affordable, not relatively affordable, but compared to the yeah, right, compared, right. Overall, they're still relatively affordable, um, you know, but but. Uh, they, they have now caught on. You're paying an extra $20,000 now because now people are like, oh, well, it's been validated. This one bought one. That one bought one. Now it's cool. Right. You know what I mean? These watches were always good. And you yeah. know what's funny too? One, one guy that I know that has one of these, I don't know him personally, but uh, he's an Italian um, like style guy, mm-hmm. Alessandro Squarzi. Do you know who that is? Yes, of course. Okay, so, so he's got a huge collection of watches, like stupid money in watches. God mm-hmm. bless you, Alessandro. Um, but he has one. And... He posts watches quite a bit, Yep. you know, Mm -hmm. and when all the Nautilus craze was going on, and he's got a ton of Nautilus and all that, but he posted something, and he posted a reference 5170, so it was a chronograph with a black dial, white gold case, real class, modern, but very classic Patek Philippe, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he said something to the effect of, um, kind of fed up with 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 the hype nonsense, saying like, I'm done with the hype, this is true Patek Philippe, pure elegance. And that is so true, right? Mm. Patek Philippe, you know, the DNA, as far as like, Patek Philippe's DNA is in elegance. 100%. It wasn't until the Nautilus that Patek went, you know. It's like, it wasn't until Patek thought they were going to die, essentially. Right, basically, exactly right. right. I mean, you know, and uh, I don't know, like, it's still a very important part of their history. Right. But I feel like, are you, a, you know, are you a Patek Philippe fan, truly, if you don't appreciate the pure elegance of their lineage. I mean, not to say that you need to buy all that stuff, but right. if you're just a Nautilus guy, are you a Paddock guy? No. Right. Yeah, you need to be. Like, you need to really be well. You know what I mean? It's a, that's like saying, you know, um, you know, I like how funny you are. Well, Thank I don't you. like you. Right. You that's know what I mean? Like a lot of people. You know, like, you have a, exactly. <laughs> like, like if you just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course, of course. You're not really, you're not really friends with. You're someone providing you, something other than exactly. Yeah, right. I can't just like pick that one thing I like about you. you yeah, know? right. That's right. not cool. No, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's the same with like what people said about AP. Like, yeah, you can't just like the Audemars, or you can't just like the Royal Oak. If right. That's not it. And yeah. it makes a lot of sense because when you look at the Nautilus, that is such an outlier from the rest of what they make. Mm-hmm. That it's like, well, oh, no, look at their departure. original DNA, right? And I would say, if you haven't seen anything outside of a Royal Oak, you do have to see a paddock in the metal. Because the sizing is perfect. It's perfect, yeah, paddock. And that's what makes it so nice. You're like, oh, that's not as big as I pictured compared to everything else. That's actually, everything's very condensed and Dude, proportioned Dude, in correctly. two seconds, I would do a paddock. I, I would love the 50, uh, 5170. They're beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, the 5170P is the watch. Like, this This is, this is that's, that's the, that's like... A real watch for me. How big is it? Like, I think it's forty. See, it's like exactly right. It's perfect. But their, look at their it. last um... blue foam dial with baguette indices. That's oh, not yeah. me. Yeah, no, that's me to a T, dude. If it was yellow gold, even more. Oh my god, that's the black with the rose. Yeah, that's the blue. Oh my god. Pure but that's elegance. the thing. They offer that in forty. They offered that um, minute repeater <sighs> that we talked about last week, yeah. also in forty. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, okay, well, that's great. That's the right size. Exactly. Everything's condensed. Look at that. I mean, that's f- beautiful. 
Yeah. You know, again, there's, there's, I love a Nautilus. I don't love the 5711 as much, but the 5712 to me is basically a perfect Nautilus. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, a, that's a perfect watch, in my opinion. That's gorgeous, yeah. Um, but you don't... You don't really understand Paddock until you understand the beauty of a, of a Calatrava or of a formal chronograph, you know, an elegant chronograph and stuff like that. So, anyway. That's um, it. Yeah. It's kind of like you fell in love with the, now it's very successful, but at this at that time, just like throwing the life raft out and being exactly. like, something needs to pull us in. Exactly. But you need to look at the rest of the boat. Yeah, exactly right. Oh, look at you. Wait, this guy, this guy's very smart. You're going places, my friend. You're going places, hey, pal. You like milk? <laughs> <laughs> it's an inside joke with my dad. <laughs> yeah. I love inside jokes. I'd love to be a part of one one day. <laughs> All right. Adios. Bye.